Okay, so welcome everyone. We'll continue with chapter 9. We'll finish first 25 shlokas today, okay? So today, good revision and good discussion that we are going to have on well, first 25 yeah. shlokas. And there are little contentious issues also wherein we, we might end up into a debate. But let us see what Krishna tells us about those contentious issues, okay? So uh, let us start with the prayers. Om Adhyana Tivinanda Sya Gyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Menitanyena Tasma Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manu Bishram Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagara Jatam Sagana Ragunathan Vitantam Sajimam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Dalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishna Yabutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedata Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravadi Pracharine Nedvishesha Shunyavadi Pashyata De Shatarine Vancha Kalpataru Pesha Gripa Sindhu Bhevacha Patitana Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Namo Baha Vadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Tushena Maha Panchatatvat Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhaktiautaram Bhaktiakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesa Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosute Jetam Sharato Pangor Mama Manda Matirgati Matsarvasya Padam Bhuja Radha Madana Mohana Divyat Vrindaranya Kalpa Drumada Shri Madrat Nagara Simhasana Stav Shri Madrada Shri Lagovinda Deva Prista Devi Seva Manav Swarami Shri Madrasa Arasaram Vivam Shri Vatatata Stita Karshana Venu Swanir Gopi Gopi Nathaya Shri Estunaha Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasa Adi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Jagannath Baldev Shubhadra Maya ki jai, Shri La Prabhupada ki jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande, Hari 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 Hari. Okay. So, let us start. Yeah. So, let us continue with chapter 9. Quick recap of chapter 9 again. Yeah, you will say ki vapare kitne baar, how many times this chapter 9 is getting discussed, but it is very important, some important, a very important aspect. We are going to discuss today, okay? And I'm going to take a lot of polls and a lot of quiz today, okay? So everyone, please be active and please be participate and please participate. A lot of questions also I'm going to ask. So please be very enthusiastic in answering, okay? Yeah. And please raise your hand, just don't unmute and talk. Okay, so here we know the difference between yeah, we, we've seen the difference between body and soul. This has to be completely ingrained in our mind that we are not this body, but we are a spirit soul. Yeah, we will after a after a period of time we will leave this redundant body and we will take another body. Yeah, this has to be known to us. What type of body we will get after we leave this body depends upon what type of activities we do in our life. It doesn't depend upon how many degrees that we have. Or I am a PhD. I am an engineer. I am a doctor. I am a chartered accountant. Or you know, I am a very rich person. That doesn't depend, the other, what type of body you'll get doesn't depend upon the qualifications that you have or how much rich you are or how many houses you have or how big car you have. That is not going to decide what type of body you'll get in the next life. But what type of karma you do, 
will decide on what type of body you will get in next life. This has to be completely ingrained into your mind because all these things are not taught in the school. These are the things which ideally should have taught in the school, but these are not taught in the school. These are life lessons we should know. Okay? Then, we should, the, when another very important thing that, that we should know is that everyone is a child of Krishna. Yeah, everyone is a child of Krishna. So, Paramatma in form of Shiro, Paramatma in form of Shiro Deyakshi Vishnu is sitting in the, in everyone's heart. Just give me one second. Yeah, so we should know that Paramatma in form of Shiro Dev Sri Vishnu is sitting in everyone's heart. So we do not have right to kill anyone. We do not get the authority because we are powerful. Mataji? We do not hold on. Hold on. We, do not, we do not have the authority to kill anyone. Yeah. Any living being, we do not have an authority to kill. Yeah, because everyone is child of God. We saw an example that. If a truck is going on the road, doesn't mean that it's the, if, if on a big highway, if a truck is going and a bicycle is going, yeah, the right. truck yeah. truck driver, the truck driver cannot think that you know I am very powerful, I am very big, so you know this cycle wala is coming in my way, I can just crush him. No, the truck driver. Cannot, hold on, me, I'll give a chance to speak. Okay, just. I'll give everyone a chance to speak. Just hold on your thoughts. Yeah. So we should know that there is Paramatma sitting in everyone's heart. We have no um, license to kill any animal. If you are killing any animal, that is going to add to our bad karma. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you know it, whether you don't know it. Yeah. So very important thing that Paramatma in form of Shiro Deyakshi Vishnu is sitting in our heart and sitting in the heart of every living being, whether it is a cockroach, whether it is a mosquito, whether it is a tree or whichever living being it is there. Yeah. So this should be completely ingrained in our mind. Yes, yes, proceed. I see your hand raised. Mataji, in, if we do bad uh, karma, we will go to Naraka, right, Mataji? After that, uh, will uh, Paramatma still will be uh, with, with us? So, Paramatma never leaves us. Even we become a uh, a small, uh, what you call, uh, a worm in a stool. Stool, you know, right? Waste. Yes, Maharaj. Even if you become the, a worm in a stool, Paramatma is there, even there with us. Paramatma never leaves us. He is like our father. He will never leave us. Our parents also, so much wrong things we do in our life. They will shout at us. They will scold us. They will punish us. But our parents will never leave us. Like that, Paramatma is there. Whichever uni you be go, Paramatma will never give us. Yeah? Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. Yes, Yashika, you have a question? Yes, Mataji. Loudly. Yes, Mataji. Mataji, you said that uh, Krishna is pre uh, present inside uh, like every living thing in insects also. So why do we send the insects out if they come into our home? Why do we? Why do we send the insects out if they come into our home? Why do we do what? Why do we kill? No, Mataji. Why do we send the insects out if they come into our home? Ah, why do we send the insects out if they come into our home? Because then otherwise the things are insects will disturb us. We will fall sick if the mosquito bites us and we will not be able to do bhakti. So we will we'll need a mosquito repellent. If we, if we have cockroaches in our kitchen, then will we be able to make nice bhoga for the Lord? No. Right? So we should so cleanliness is really important. So that is why if insects come, if worms come in our house, we should keep our house clean. Why? Because our house is a temple of the Lord. Doesn't mean that anyone can come and anyone can go. We should, it is our duty to keep it clean. Yeah? Sachi, I see your hand raised. 
yes mata ji i wanted to say that if you do bad karmas your life on, on in kalyug will feel so nice and if you do nishkama karmas then the life on earth on in kalyug will be a little difficult so it is said that uh, the life on earth feels like hell then the life in like god head will feel like heaven <laughs> absolutely yeah yes yashika still you have a question no mataji i just forgot to okay okay no problem no problem Okay, so let's move on. So this is very important for us to note. Krishna will never leave us. Yeah. So this is the this is the one thing which we we should we should know. Yeah. And we also know the relationship between the soul and the super soul. We saw that the soul and super soul is like a parent and a child relationship. We are soul and a super soul is Krishna. Super soul is called as Paramatma. Super soul is also called as Chiru Deyakshi Vishnu. Now you all have to remember these words, ah, Shiro Deyakshi Vishnu, Karno Deyakshi Vishnu. Now we are in the ninth chapter. So now slowly, slowly, hear these words over a period of time. You will remember these words also. Yeah, you will get familiar with these words and you will remember these words. So super soul is called as Paramatma. Super soul is called as Shiro Deyakshi Vishnu. And there is a loving relationship between them. It is not like a, a, a teacher and a, a you know student, a strict teacher and a student. It is not like that. It is a loving relationship between. Krishna and Super Soul, yeah. Okay, and this we saw. Actually, let's see this very carefully. Yeah, there is going to be a twist, a very easy one, but uh, there is going to be a twist. Yeah, in between only. Yeah, during the class. Okay, so this is one universe. We saw that there are these fourteen planet planetary system. Yeah, uh, this is um, uh, Brahma. Okay, then this is Brahma's abode. This is uh, Satya Loka. This is the biggest abode of all the. Uh, 14th planetary system, Brahma is the creator of the universe, but he is the secondary creator of the universe. Once this universe is created by Karno Shri Vishnu, then Brahma is the secondary creator who creates, who is uh, involved into creation of all these 14 planetary systems. Okay. Then uh, Krishna lives in four-handed form in Vaikuntha. We should remember yeah, in two-handed form, Krishna stays in Goloka. Yeah, here we saw. Yeah, this is Goloka. Here Krishna stays in two-handed. He is like having all the rasas. Yeah, the Sakya Ras, Vatsalya Ras, Madhurya Ras, um, Vatsalya Ras, right? Shanta Ras, all these two different rasas Krishna exhibit here in this, in the Goloka. Here in Vaikuntha, he is like, you know, our father in office. Yeah, our father in office, how does our father go to office? He will have proper dress, formal dress, shoes, sometimes ties, tie and coat. Yeah, and uh, you know, he will he will comb his hair, hair properly, nicely and like that. So like this, right? Like this, our father in office is like Krishna in Vaikuntha, in four-handed form. Yeah, with Shankar, Chakra, Gada, Padma. We should remember this. And our father at home in t-shirt, shorts, trousers. Yeah, will be is like Krishna in in Goloka. Now Krishna in Goloka wears a turban with a peacock feather. Krishna in Vaikuntha wears a wears a what do you call a, a gold gold helmet? Yeah, helmet crown in 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 Vaikuntha. So we should remember Goloka is topmost. Uske niche uh, next to it is Vaikuntha. Uske niche the uh, down is Shivaloka. Down there is now are all these universes, yeah, Karno, the actual Vishnu and all that, and all the universes. This is Goloka, when Krishna is performing all the pastimes, Madhurya Ras with the gopis, with his mother Yashoda, Vatsala Ras, yeah, then uh, Dasya Ras, yeah? Sakya Ras, yeah? all these different Rasas, Krishna is performing in Goloka, yeah. So here you see the topmost is Goloka. Remember, this, this should be complete, this should be there in our mind. Why am I revising it? This should not go out of your mind. You should you should always remember this. When I say Goloka, this 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 should come into your mind. This is Goloka. When I say Vaikuntha, this should come to your mind. First is Goloka, next is Vaikuntha, and third is all this. Now, millions and millions of universes, unlimited universes which are there. Okay. Mataji. Yeah. What was the third one? Third one is this our normal universes. Right when, when Krishna sleeps in, when Vishnu comes, uh, 
sleeps as Karno, the Akshri Vishnu, and from his body, millions and millions of universes comes out. Yeah. So that is all these universes. Oh. Yeah. Then who will understand this knowledge? Krishna is saying. Krishna is saying that only his pure devotees will understand this knowledge. One who believes in Krishna will understand this. You go and tell your school friends about Goloka, Vaikuntha, and different planetary systems, they will say, hmm, it is nothing like this. This is earth, this is universe, yeah, this is sky, there is only one sun. And they will say, oh, yeah, all these things we don't understand. They will not understand because they do not chant, because they do not understand Bhagavad Gita class. They, they do not attend Bhagavad Gita class. So it's very important. This is very confidential knowledge. This is very secret knowledge which only Krishna gives to his devotees. Yeah. So that is why, and we will understand it only when, uh, yeah. So then this, how how is this knowledge? This knowledge is Raj Vidya, Raj Bhuyam. It is Raj Vidya. It is the best amongst all the knowledge. I'm going to launch a poll now. Yeah. Okay, let me launch a poll. Where did my polls disappear? Hmm. Okay. Okay. So the, this I had to launch. Okay. So. Okay. Come on. This one is Earth a spiritual planet? Yes or no? Okay. Good. Dad Mataji. Okay. Dan. Good. 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 Dan Mataji. Dan Mataji. Mataji submitted the poll. Dan Mataji oh, submitted the poll. That means poll, sir. Today, I did some of the Okay. Many of them have answered. I'm just waiting for everyone to answer. Mataji submitted. Okay, good. Mataji submitted. Answer quickly. Ten more to answer. Come on, fast, fast. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, and one. I'm going to end the four. Okay, so the correct answer is no. Earth is not a spiritual planet because after some time, the Earth gets into destruction. Which are the two spiritual planets? Can someone tell? Mataji can I tell? Yes. Mataji can I tell? Mataji Yes. Mataji Yes, Swara. Mataji, Vaikuntha planet and Goloka. Absolutely. Vaikuntha and Goloka. Absolutely. Very nice. Absolutely. Very nice. Yeah. Now, another quote which I'm going to launch. Okay. So, stop sharing there. Yeah. Okay. This one. Okay. Let me launch this one. Well, you're still sharing, is it? Why I am okay? Poll is being shared. I have to stop share that. Share. Ah, okay, this one. Okay. Why is Bhagavad Gita called Raj Vidya? It is superior to all the knowledge that we learn in our school subjects. It is spoken by Krishna Himself, who is the supreme personality of Godhead. It is applicable to this one you are not Mataji submitted the poll. Okay. Mataji submitted the poll. Okay. I'm just waiting for three of you to finish it. Okay, a few more. Come on fast. Come on, fast, 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 fast. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So the correct answer is all of the above. Yeah, so very good. So this is what we should know. So you should know that whatever you are learning in Bhagavad Gita is not an ordinary subject. It is, it is Raja Vidya. It is like the king of all the knowledge. Yeah? So, big happy to all the kids who participated. Yeah. So, the correct answer is all of 
Oh, I did not share the results. Okay. The correct answer is all of the above. Okay. So good. Very nice. Wonderful. So everyone, please participate. Okay. Yeah. Let's move ahead. Yeah. Taji, in our school, they don't teach Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, but then Krishna has given you an opportunity to learn Bhagavad Gita, even if it is not taught in the school. So we should take full advantage. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so let's move ahead. Yeah, it is a top knowledge, secret knowledge. It is purest amongst all. Yeah. Actually, question to all of you. Was Bhagavad Gita uh, there uh, 5,000 years ago or even before that? Yes, Chaitanya. It was before also. Uh, Mataji, uh, it actually existed before. Also, the knowledge actually passed on, uh, passed on and passed on until it came to the human beings on earth. Yeah. So how how do we know that? Which was that shloka? Anyone remembers? Yes, uh, Pallavi, you remember? Fourth chapter, uh, first shloka. Yes, then, which is the uh, shloka? Anyone knows 4.1? Four four fourth chapter, first shloka. Come on, Mataji. Can I? Yes, please. Imam Vishwa te yogam prokta vanam avyam Vishwa swan bana vipraha. Manu Ishvaka Pravit and the translation the personality of Godhead Lord Sri Krishna said I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to be his son God Vishwasa and Vishwasa instructed it to Manu the father yeah. of man yeah and Manu instructed to Ishvaku yeah so this was that he says imperishable knowledge yeah so this knowledge is always there. Why? Because Krishna was always there. Why? Because we were also always there. Yeah. So this imperishable knowledge was instructed by him to Sun God. Was like that. Yeah. So this knowledge is always there, and that is why it is king of all the knowledge. Yeah. How should we acquire this knowledge? Only by with association of devotees. Ha. Huh. Now in this nine point three, no, uh, Krishna is explaining about three classes of devotees. A third class devotee. A second class devotee and a first class devotee. Yeah, so we should know in which category we fall. A third class devotee, or, of course, you don't fall, you are all first class devotees, but you should know what is a third class devotee, what is a second class devotee. It sounds very it, it sounds very funny to say a third class devotee. So third class devotee, you know, Prabhupada explains that third class devotee are the devotees who do not have faith in Krishna. They come to Krishna or they come to temple only for material benefits and they have no knowledge or they have no faith in Krishna. Yeah. So if, if for example, if someone loses a job, uh, someone wants to get good marks or, you know, someone, uh, or it could be any, anything, someone wants uh, wants to uh, start his business and then, you know, wants, wants to earn a lot of money like a greedy person. Yeah. Those will go to Krishna, Krishna, uh, see, I, I am, or, they, or, you know, someone is, Whatever could be someone is in problem, they will go to Krishna and then you know, Krishna, please help me, please help me. Krishna helps now, his work is over. Okay, thank you, Krishna. It was nice meeting you. Thank you so much. Going back to his own world and leaving Krishna. So, coming to Krishna only for material benefits, yeah, not coming to Krishna for uh, out of love. There is no love, yeah, they're only coming to Krishna. I want this. I got this. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Third class devotee. Second class devotee are the devotees who have some faith in Krishna. Yeah, they go to the temple. Yeah, their, their uh, uh, family tradition is there, going to the temple, you know, studying something. They do not have much knowledge. Yeah, they do not have much knowledge. They do not have much knowledge of the scripture and all. But they have been a ticket. There is some, there is some power, superpower. There is Krishna. Uh, there is God and we believe in God and out of fear they worship they worship Krishna because second class devotee then a first class devotee is a devotee who has full faith in Krishna as for the one second beta he, were, he has good knowledge of teachings of Krishna see like all of you are studying Bhagavad Gita so most of you have because we are like you know Revising the concepts so many times that it is difficult for you to forget. 
Yeah, every time I bring up an important concept and then, you know, it, it, it again gets registered in the mind. Yeah. So this is how we now we have the knowledge, but what to do with that knowledge? Yeah, we should apply that knowledge in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah, when we say Nishkama Karma Yoga, we should apply that Nishkama Karma Yoga in our regular life, in our daily life. Yeah. If you just know, okay, if I ask you what is Nishkama Karma Yoga, you will tell me what is Nishkama Karma Yoga. If I, if I ask you what is a karma, you will tell me what is a karma. Yeah, Vikarma, Karma, Nishkama Karma Yoga, all that will tell me. But if you're not applying in your life, there is no use. Then you are not a first class devotee. Then you are either a second class or a third class devotee. So we have to apply the knowledge in our life. It will not happen that on day one, okay, we become Nishtam Karma Yogi. That will not happen. But slowly, slowly, it will happen. Understand that. Slowly, slowly, it will happen. You have to put it in practice. Like if you go to, to, for, for swimming classes, on the first day, even if you know all the instructions of swimming, on the first day, you will not be able to swim. Slowly, slowly, you will be able to swim, yeah, swim as you practice. Exactly the same way, you have to practice this and then you will be help, You will be able to live life as for the teachings of Krishna. You will be able to follow his instructions. You will have a good knowledge about the teaching of Krishna. And then we become a first class devotee. As of now, we all, including me, we are all second class devotees. We have to aspire. We are all practicing devotees, including me. We are all practicing devotees. So we have to go up to the ladder of first class devotees wherein we have firm faith in Krishna. This is what Prabhupada is saying. We should achieve this. This is what Krishna is saying. This is all we should achieve. Yeah. So now, anytime when you, when, when you are behaving, in, you know, anytime when you are behaving like a, uh, like a Ravana in the day, you should remind yourself, am I behaving like a first class, second class or a third class devotee? Okay, so that should come in our mind, yeah. So many times it happens that, you know, we are not behaving in a way. We sometimes shout at our parents, we sometimes shout at our friends, we do not, you know, we do not behave in a Krishna conscious way. Then we should remind, oh, I'm behaving like a third class devotee. No, oh, I'm behaving like a second class devotee. No, 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 let me correct myself. Krishna is not going to like it, yeah. So it should always keep us, keep reminding ourselves, okay. So, yeah. Yes, Radhika Sanmi, I see your hand raised. Mataji, what is the meaning of material benefits? Material benefits means if you can lose your job. Oh, Krishna, you know, please, please help me get, get my job. I will do this for you. I will do that for you. Like that. Or Krishna, my exam is there. Please help me, you know, get uh, above, say, 90%. Krishna, please, I will chant two extra rounds for you. That is our material benefit. Or please, I, we want to go for a picnic to whatever to USA. Yes, please let me, like that. Okay. Yashika, I see your hand raised. Any question? Yes, Mataji. Yes. Mataji, what does for mean? Sorry? For what does for mean? What is what? What does for mean? I am not able to hear. Chaitanya, you heard what is she saying? No, Mataji, I am uh, neither able to understand. Mataji, what? she said, what is the meaning of firm? What is the meaning of what? Firm faith, firm faith. The firm is there somewhere. In what first class it? devotee. First class. Achha, first class. Oh, what is the meaning of firm faith in Krishna? Okay, so firm faith in Krishna, I would not have seen the, the that um, movie of uh, it Doesn't matter. This Kerala story. So firm faith in Krishna is if someone says, Oh, you are Ram. Your Ram is how 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 is your God Ram? He is crying. He is, he, he even couldn't save his, his wife. Yeah. What type of God is he? He couldn't save his wife. He was, he was crying like a normal, ordinary person. Your God cannot be like such an ordinary person. Yeah. Then Yashika should have an answer. Why did Lord Ram cry? Why did Lord Ram immediately not go and you know bring back Sita? Why did he wait for so many months? Yeah. So if Yashika has that answer and Yashika explains it, that means Yashika knows that then Yashika has a firm faith in Krishna. But if Yashika also starts doubting, oh no, what the other person is saying is right. How can a God, you know, cry? 
how can the God be so weak? When when we have started, start, when we start having doubts, then that is not a firm faith. Strong faith. Yeah? So having strong faith in Krishna. That yes, I know Krishna will protect me. I know Krishna is there with like that. Okay? Okay, Mataji. Chaitanya, you, your hand is raised. You have a question? No, Mataji, sorry. Okay. Yes, yes, Masini. Mataji, I am trying, I am I am going to uh, Lord Ram did not save Sita immediately because uh, Hanuman had already went and came back. But uh, only Sita wanted, only Sita wanted Ram to save her. But Ram over there is trying to act like a human more. Yeah. And, um, he is trying to do everything like a human. Absolutely. So this is all, all this background now we should know. When we know this, then our faith will be there. Yeah. So then we then we'll know, okay, Ram, individuals, even if he's acting as an ordinary human being, like Ishwasin said, he's still the Lord. He's still full of Purushottam of the very nice Ishwasin. Yes, Kalan. Thank you, Matash. Just now said that Bhagavad Gita is king of knowledge. So what is the difference between Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita? Okay, so Bhagavad Gita actually is um, shows the opulences of Krishna in the sense that how big it tells about Krishna and it tells about how opulences, how to explain. It, it tells about how big is it. For example, for example, a king, okay? So king is telling, okay? So king is telling, you know, see my kingdom is so big. You know, on the east side, we extend up to this. On the west side, we extend up to this. We have, then he's telling about his army that, you know, I we have a thousand chariots, we have 10,000 horses, we have 8,000 elephants, like that. So if king is telling about all these things, that is, you know, that is that, that is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. But king in his house, so, so Bhagavatam tells about the pastimes of the Lord. It tells about the different avatars of the Lord. It tells about Lord in a very personal uh, form, like that. Yeah. So, so all the all the pastimes which are there in Goloka, yeah, all those different pastimes of, of the Lord are told in Bhagavatam. It's very personal. It's very intimate uh, pastimes of the Lord. But here in uh, Bhagavad Gita, it is all philosophy. Our connection with Krishna, opulences of Krishna. What are our duties in in this life? Yeah, all these things. A relationship with Krishna and all that, that is told in in Bhagavatam. In uh, Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Yes, Sachin. Mataji, as you are talking about a relationship between devotees and Krishna, so I would like to share a, a real thing that is that is happening in Vrindavan. Like usually in temples, God is awakened by 5 a.m. But in Vrindavan, it is said that God is waked up by 8, 8.30 or 7 o'clock because uh, they the devotees think that uh, the Lord Krishna is small and he is still in sleep. So we will not disturb him. Yeah. So that is that is how you, know, you see Krishna as, you don't see Krishna as a deity. You see Krishna as a small little boy. Yeah. So which is, uh, or a cow -cut boy like that. Good. So then to become a devotee of Krishna, we need to build a relationship with Krishna. Okay, so this relationship is 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 very, very important. So for example, if someone someone comes, if you if you go to someone's house, okay, you knock the door. Yeah. That person to whose house you're going will allow you to come inside only if that person knows you. Yeah. If if that person knows you, then he'll say, Okay, please come in and all. But if, if that person doesn't know you, will that person allow you to come and say, ah, okay, anyone come into my house? Kya farak hai? Yeah. Will, will, anyone, will you allow anyone to come into your house? Yeah, no, only if the person knows you. Like that, to become a nice devotee of Krishna and to get entry into Guloka, Krishna says, Prabhupada explains that we need to have a, we need to build up relationship with Krishna. Now, relationship with Krishna is already there. But we need to revive that relationship by chanting his holy name, studying and knowing. Only when we have love for Krishna, then only we can entry in Guru Ka. Otherwise, there is no entry. Okay, so this we should. So let's move ahead. Aishwarya, you have a question? Mataji, but Prabhupada said in one lecture that 
you can you kal you devotees cannot come in goloka i will give you entry from back side and that is of course the so, 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 prabhupada is prabhupada is anyway is coming from goloka he is saying that kalyug may if you so chaitanya mahaprabhu came here why did chaitanya mahaprabhu come in kaluga he came here to give us a holy name because he is saying just chant the holy name of krishna and go back home back to god prabhupada is saying that even even if if something goes wrong and even if you forget you entire life you remember krishna but something goes wrong and maybe you know if um, and at the end point in time you miss out that last moment i will give back to back to rent like that <laughs> okay yeah so then we saw the story of narad muni narad muni because he heard all the instructions of krishna that is the reason why he followed and uh, uh, listened to all the instructions of krishna that is why he he uh, could become a very nice devotee of krishna and he got a very exalted position again krishna says that uh, those who are unfaithful in devotional service will never conquer me they will get stuck into path of birth and birth death birth and death yeah then we must hold on hold on hold on huh? then he says in 9.4 me in my unmanifested form the entire universe is pervaded all living beings are me but i am not in them yeah for the so for example here these are all energies of krishna so you cannot say this is krishna this is krishna this is krishna so he says i am the entire universe is i in my unmanifested form this entire universe is pervaded pervaded all beings are in me but i am not in them so lord by all pervasiveness does not lose his personal existence yeah he enters into each planet and by energy he says all the planets stay in the orbit yeah so for example this is a king this example is given okay this is a king is present in all the department by its energies like for example the ministers are there right so we have this finance minister we have education minister but at the same time we know that this education minister is not prime minister we know finance minister is not prime minister we know who is the prime minister so we know the the position of the prime minister and we know the position of the education minister we know the position position of the aviation minister we know the position of finance minister like that yeah so even if even if we are dealing with the dealing with say whichever minister or even if we are dealing with chief minister we know that the chief minister is working under direction of the prime minister yeah and the chief minister can never become a prime minister a yeah, prime minister is different chief minister is different another example i can give you is that for example uh, uh, a boy okay boy is very intelligent boy and he is very intelligent and he is uh, so he has made the monitor of the class but can he become the principal of the school no yeah so he will still continue to be the monitor of the class even if he is very intelligent if he is very sharp still he will continue to become the monitor of the class he will cannot become the principal of the school similarly all these demigods you are seeing durga devi shiva saraswati ganpati yeah all this all the demigods brahma they are the administrators of the universe they are not the at the helm of the universe at the helm of the universe at the top of the universe is krishna only this has to go completely into your mind okay this is what krishna is saying i am not saying this this is what krishna is saying in bhagavad gita he is telling the position of ganpati he is telling the position of durga devi he is telling the position of shiva so sometimes what happens is this becomes a very sensitive issue because sometimes you know we think no i i worship shiva and i have read shiv puran and in shiv puran it is written that the shiva is topmost yeah but the thing is that krishna is saying what is the position of shiva so we should not feel offended that oh how can you you know we you say that krishna is uh, higher than shiva but that is a reality yeah we can worship shiva we can worship ganesha but the mood should be that we know that shiva ganesha sun god they are all receiving the energy from krishna can sun god function on his own let me launch a poll hold on let me launch a poll okay so here is your poll come on 
One, two, three. Because these small, small concepts are there. But if these concepts become clear to you, no, then there will be no. Yeah. Have learned the pool or no? Ah, yes. Submitted, Mataji. Good. Yes, Submitted, Mataji. Submitted, Mataji. Submitted, Mataji. Submitted, Mataji. Yes. Mataji. Mataji submitted. Mataji. Good, very nice. Come on. Mataji submitted. Okay, Mataji. good. I'm going to end the poll. Five, four, three, two, one. And I'm going to end the poll now. Okay, so. Sun and moon cannot function on their own. They derive the energy from Krishna. So, correct answer is no. Okay. Mataji, my answer is correct. Mataji, nice. my answer is correct. Mataji, my answer is correct. Sorry, good, good. Very nice. Sanskriti, you have a question? Yes, Mataji. Mataji, uh, this uh, in the yugas, Hmm. There are four yugas, so the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. In hmm. out of all four of that, this uh, only Kali Yuga was the bad one. Why is that so? Because Kali Yuga, all the people do all the Masti, everyone just want to enjoy Krishna. No one wants to do Bhakti. Yeah? Kali Yuga, now at least you know, you see. Uh, uh, at least an altar in everyone's house. Wherever there are grandparents, parents, you at least see an altar in everyone's house. Next generation will not even have an altar in their house. They'll just have a small photo or something. So Kali Yuga is a very degraded uh, uh, form of, you know, people don't worship. People are not interested in uh, knowing about Krishna. People just want to enjoy. People just want to go out and people just want to enjoy. But uh, so that's the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he said, Baba, these people are not going to do deity worship, these people are not going to do yajna, these people are not going to do anything. Just let them chant the holy name and study Bhagavad Gita, and then that is the reason why. So it's like a sale, you know. So now it is sale. You just chant the holy name and come back to home to back, back home back to God. Like that. Okay, Mataji. Yeah? Okay, chat. Okay, let's move ahead. Mataji, I had a doubt. Yes. Mataji, if Krishna knows who's going to become the devotee, so why does he send distractions in between? Oh, he has to test us, no? Why do we but do Mataji, he knows what's to happen. Like, but, if the devotee is going to pass the test or no, so why does he send it? You no, know, so devotees, so basically, you know, devotees also have, need to have firm faith, right? So, so for example, um, say for, for example, we, we have so many challenges in our life, right? Say, Sachi also might have some challenges in her life. You will have some difficulties with your friends. You will have difficulties with so many things, uh, so many other, uh, maybe with studies or maybe with teachers. So you, you have to be tough and you have to increase your dependence on Krishna. So like, for example, you say, for example, when a, when a person is to be sent on moon, moon, we cannot go, but, uh, just for the sake of discussion. For the sake of discussion, if the person has to be sent on moon, he has to undergo a different process, right? He has to be, uh, there is so many, uh, he's, he's pinned into so many things, he's, he's put into a completely different atmosphere so that when he goes there, he gets acclimatized to that, uh, to that uh, atmosphere, right? Similarly, for us, our mind has to get acclimatized to go there and serve there. Again, if we see, Are, everyone is, so for few days, you go to Voloka, and you will find, ah, oh, it is so nice, this, that. After a few years, you realize, what is there? Everyone is only serving Krishna. I cannot, I, I don't get time to sleep. I want to sleep. I want to play on my own. I don't want to play with Krishna. Then what will happen? Again, send back. You want to work independent. Like that. So when mind has to be completely purified. For purification of mind, these tests are really important. Unless these tests are there, our mind will not get purified. Our mind is very tender. Got it? Okay. So let's move it. Then Krishna is saying, Abhyakta Murtina. It indicates that in the it that it simply we cannot see the Lord by our gross material senses. The Lord is unmanifest to the so we cannot see Lord by the material senses. And Lord can only be perceived by those who are purified by practice of devotional service. And Narad Muni also, Krishna gave Narad Muni just one, one 
uh, games. Okay, during his meditation. After that, you know, he just completely, he, he just vanished himself. And he said, this lifetime, you will not be able to see me. Yeah, but still Narad Muni continued his devotional service. He did not leave Krishna. Yeah, he continued. He meditated on Krishna. He went to the holy places. And then he got back home. When he got a chance to go back home, back to God. Then yeah. Krishna says, I, although I am maintainer of all living entities and although I am everywhere, I am not part of this cosmic manifestation for myself is a source of very creation. Yeah. Then, I now see this carefully. I am going to launch some five, six questions now. Huh? Yeah, this is Goloka. Krishna in two-handed form. Yeah, Krishna in two-handed form. This is Brahma Jyoti, Karana Ocean. Millions of universes are coming out of Krishna's body. I am going to launch a poll now. See all these pictures very carefully. I am going to launch a poll. Yeah, this is Karanodayakshi Vishnu, the Karana Ocean. From his body, millions of universes are coming out. Yeah, okay. So now I'm going to launch a poll in everyone's again. Yeah. Okay, so this is Shirodayakshi Vishnu, is present in everyone's heart. Yeah, this is Garbodayakshi Vishnu. Shirodayakshi Vishnu is present in everyone's heart. Garbodayakshi Vishnu, who goes in, in each universe, from whose navel Brahma comes out. This is Garbodayakshi Vishnu, from whose navel Brahma comes out. And Brahma is the secondary creator. Karnodayakshi Vishnu is the primary creator and Brahma is the secondary creator. Okay, listen very carefully. A pole is going to be there. Yeah. Okay. What else? Yeah. Okay, this is Goloka. Okay, now I'm going to launch a pole. Okay. Come on. One, two, three. This is a big pole. Huh? Come on, everyone. Everyone has to be very alert and attentive. It's an easy one, very easy one, but just do it nicely. Come on. Mixed answers are coming. Mataji, in the last, there is a question which is called untitled question, Mataji. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. I can, don't, don't attempt that question, okay. Don't attempt that last question. My bad. Still, still everyone is answering those. Don't answer that question. Mataji, it was a... Very easy. Mataji submitted. Mataji submitted. Good, very nice. Mataji submitted. Excuse me, Mataji. Yes, Vita. Uh, Mataji, uh, as since the since Vishnu is in the state of rest, he, uh, he's uh, sleeping for four months. So during this period, then uh, who is handling the universe? He is not sleeping for four months. You had sent that to me, you know. I missed seeing that. One second. He is not yeah. sleeping for four months. And even if you can show He is actually even... not sleeping. He is in yoga nidra. He just mm. yeah, he is he does yoga nidra, he doesn't sleep for chaturmas. So so like even when we say that you know Ram uh, Ram is they are, they are performing certain certain kinds of pastimes or they are performing certain kinds of activity. It doesn't mean that you just go to sleep and now the universe is under one's control. It's not like that. Like a shoes in medicine is in yoga nidra. Mataji, in question. So then in case of him, is there someone else, some other god that uh, handles that? Even if other god is handling, understand one thing that everything is handling under the supervision of Krishna. Not even a blade of grass will move without the uh, sanction of Krishna. So even that other god, even if I don't know where this is mentioned, but even if it is mentioned, that god is also, that demigod is also performing action only. Maya Adhyakshena Prakriti, everything is happening only under my direction. It is not like Krishna goes to sleep completely and then, you know, things are completely hunky do It's not like that, okay? Chala, okay, I'm going to end mode now and now let us see the results. Mataji, now, it is not Krishna actually. He's trying to. Even if Krishna, Vishnu, 
Yes, so, Karnodakshi Vishnu is also working in the direction of Krishna only. Like Durga is also working in the direction of Krishna. Now, Krishna doesn't need so many heads. Krishna has unlimited power. Here he says, right? Here you saw. Yeah, he says, right? Uh, yeah, with a signal, single fragrant, a fragment of mind, I pervade and support this entire universe. It's a very small energy. So, Krishna doesn't need... Sorry, who is that? Which is the correct answer of second one? Okay, okay. So let us discuss the answers. In which planet does Lord stay in 200 form? The correct answer is Goloka. Okay. Lord doesn't stay in 200 form in our sun planet Brahma Loka. He stays in 200 form in Goloka. So the correct answer is Goloka. In which planet the Lord stays in 400 form? Here many have given correct answer. Vaikuntha Loka. Okay. So good. When is a big hurry for? To all the kids who have selected Vaikun Kaloka. Who is the primary creator of the universe? Krishna is the primary creator of the universe. Who is the secondary creator of the universe? Brahma is the secondary creator of the universe. Very nice. How many universes come out of Krishna's body? Unlimited. Very good. Which is the topmost planet? Goloka. Wonderful. Okay, so good. Very nice. So most of you have given correct answers and this we should be completely ingrained in our mind. We should know about creation of universe. Yeah, This creation of universe we should know because otherwise we will have no idea how the universe is getting created. And then, you know, it just creates... Second. Yeah. So we should know how the universe is created. So this is the knowledge that we should have. Otherwise, we will not be able to develop respectful, loving relationship with Krishna. Okay? Yeah. So then let me just... Ah, this let me explain you how much time do we have. Many, many points to cover. Okay, so here he says... Okay, listen very carefully. I'm going to read out. Listen very carefully. O son of Kunti, at the end of every millennium, all the material nature yeah, gets annihilated and it is created again by my energy. At the end of a millennium means the death of Brahma. How many years Brahma lives? Brahma lives for 100 years. Yeah? And his one day is calculated as 4, 430 crore earthly years. How many years do we live? We might live 100 years. But Brahma's one day is 430 crore years. His night is the same duration. His month, one second, I will just see it here. Okay, here you see this. Okay, Brahma, how, how many years does Brahma live? One day it is 4.32 4 billion human years. One night is 4.32 billion human years. So one day of Brahma, which is day and night, it is 8, this plus this, 8.64 human billion years. We just live for 60, 70 years. He is living for 8.64 billion years. And one month of Brahma is 259.2 billion human years. One year is 3.11 trillion human years. And Brahma lives for 100 years, which is, which is how much? 311 trillion human years. Yeah. This is the number of years which Brahma lives. And after that, annihilation happens. Yeah. And then the creation happens again. So this is the Brahma. So this is the number of years Brahma lives. So the thing is, long story short is Brahma also dies. Brahma also leaves his post at, at the end of 311 trillion years. It is not that Brahma will never die. Eventually, Brahma also, all the demigods have to give up their bodies. Yeah, important point. Yes, what I agree. Um, Mataji, you said uh, 311 trillions, but it is 311 trillions and 40 billions. Yes. I just rounded it off. So now you remember this, huh? it's very important. Not very important, but one, one very important point is that Brahma is not that Brahma never dies. Brahma also leaves his post. Okay, so he also goes. Then what, this is creation. This we should know. Big Bang Theory is not the creation of the universe. This is Mahavishnu. He glances at this Mahatattva and then the creation process starts. Yeah, He glances at this Mahatattva, Durga Devi and Shiva. They come into action. And then a set of jivas is taken, and a set of jiva is taken into one universe. This is Garbh, this is this is Garbhodayakshi Vishnu. From the Garbhodayakshi Vishnu, Devil Brahma comes. Then 
Once this universe primary creation is done, Brahma does his internal 14 planetary system. Secondary creation is done by Brahma. Okay. So Vishnu doesn't, so Vishnu is just casually lying. Yeah. So for example, someone comes to our house, right? So, so for example, a guest comes to the house here. Yeah? And then the husband looks at the guest. Yeah, the guests are sitting in the house. Husband just looks at the wife, and the wife knows that you know she maybe she has to send water outside or tea, coffee, whatever she has to send outside. Yeah, for the guest. So the husband doesn't have to get up and go and do and everything. Yeah, he just glances, and then all the things starts working automatically. Similarly, Ma Vishnu just glances, and every creation just starts happening automatically. Brahma, Vishnu doesn't have to exert a lot, do this and do that, and then the creation happens. No, it is not like that. Yeah? Everything starts happening automatically. This should be very clear in our mind how the creation happens. Okay, Big Bang Theory is good for getting marks in your exam, but this will help you in lifetime after lifetime. We should know this is the right way in which the creation happens. We should be very clear about this. Yeah. Yeah. Then Krishna says, I am the one who creates all the universes and I am the one who destroys them all. Yeah. So even if you say when Shiva is the, Shiva is, uh, is a, so Brahma is a creator, Shiva, Vishnu is the maintainer, Shiva is destroyer. Shiva also functions under the direction of Krishna. He says, Krishna is saying, I am the one who creates and I am the one who destroys. Yeah. And he says the material energy, which is one of, which is what my energies is working under the my direction of son of Kunti, my adakshina prakriti. We saw this, yeah. This Durga Devi, Durga Devi is the Durga Devi is the um uh, is functions, she is a jail keeper, yeah. She she functions under the direction of Krishna. So when we do Durga Puja, yeah, we should know what is the position of Durga Devi. Yeah. So now when we do Durga Puja in the Shera, we should not do with ignorance. We should do with full knowledge. Just one second, just one. And I'm sorry. So now when we attend Durga Puja, now when we attend Ganesh festival, now when we attend say Kadva Chauth or whatever, I don't know, I have different uh, the art festivals or different pujas are done in different houses, yeah, in different customs. Now after studying Bhagavad Gita, we should do everything with knowledge and not in ignorance. This is what Krishna is telling. I'm going to come to demigods. Again, a very contentious topic. I'm going to come to that. Yeah. Okay, let's move ahead. Yeah, Avijananti Mahamuda, we saw what happens to the people who do not uh, worship Krishna. Yeah, this we saw. I'm going to skip this. Uh, what type of worship we What type of worship should we perform? How much time do we have? Okay. Let me focus on this thing. Yeah. Satat. Krishna says, Satatam ke. This is again a very important shloka. Okay, we will have some shloka contest in uh, October. Huh? October end, we will have shloka contest. And several shlokas. Yeah. Okay, Satatam Kirta Yan Toma, Yetan Tasha, Ridabritaha, Namashantas, Chamam Bhaktia, Nitya, Yukta, Pasate. This is what Krishna says. Always chant my glories, endeavor with determination, bow down before me and worship me with devotion. If you do this, then you get a chance to come back home, back to Godhead. Yeah? So, people in knowledge worship Krishna as Supreme Lord. So yesterday we spent a time on this, but quickly, out of these pictures, I have launched a poll yesterday. See and see these three pictures and tell me which one is the best form of worship. Okay, let me see where is that. One second. Oh, oh I deleted it. Okay, let me launch a poll. Okay, quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Okay, so uh, so first is picture one. You have to select which picture is uh, uh, the app. Okay, so which which is the best type of bhakti that we should perform? Picture one, picture two, picture three, or none? 
of the above. Okay, come on. One, two, three, and you're going to be in yards. Okay. Someone is on. Someone is unmute. Please, you want me to? Submitted, Madhuji. Okay, good. Submitted, Madhuji. Submitted. 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 Okay. Madhuji, get the poll. Madhuji, I did not get the poll. I don't know. Mataji, can you send it again? Mataji, can you send it again? I can't send it again. I can send only once. So it says which form of bhakti is the best? Whether it is picture one, two, three, or none of the above. Yeah. Now yesterday, who had attempted it would know the answer. But I am getting so mixed responses. I'm going to end the poll. Okay. Sharing the results. The correct answer is none of the above. Yeah. Then this picture, this is what this is worshipping as, you know, that I am the I the, that you know, but meditating, assuming that eventually one one day I will also become God. Okay. In the second picture, what, what is happening? Here they are worshipping demigods. So demigods, of course, Krishna. Krishna doesn't uh, promote worshipping demigods. Okay. Please be on mute. And here is the Vishwaroop, wherein we think that, you know, Krishna, the, we actually worship the material, the Himalayas, the Ganges, yeah, the big uh, banyan tree and all that. So we assume that that is Krishna. But Krishna is, the, what is in knowledge? Krishna the knowledge uh, knowledgeable the people who are knowledgeable they worship krishna in two-handed form or in the four-handed form as narayana this is what krishna says i am not saying anything of this this is what krishna says in 9.15 yeah you should not be worshiping me we should not be worshiping demigod we should not be worshiping the vishwaru the devotees they will worship krishna in the two-handed or the four-handed form okay so you should not get upset with me that what am I teaching, you know, demigod, demigod, they are worshipping and all. Now see, this again, very important part, okay? This is what we saw. For the Brahmins who think that, you know, Krishna is a in-person form, Krishna doesn't have a form. To the Brahmins, he's giving a special, specific message. And to the Brahmanas who are performing, performing home, to the Brahmanas who are performing yadnya, he is giving a specific message, Krishna is giving a specific message to them. I am the sacrifice, I am the fire, I am the offering, I am the butter, I am the transcendental mantra. Whatever you are offering into that yajna, that I am there, okay? So, we should understand that if whatever yajna we are performing, whatever home we are performing in our house or in uh, maybe in the temple, we should know that it is, it is for Krishna. It is, everything is Krishna. Fire is Krishna. Then Krishna is saying, I am the father, I am the mother, I am the grandmother. Yeah? Krishna is saying, I am everything, yeah? Yeah, then Krishna is saying, I am the goal, so, so you are not, if there is Krishna has, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has left no ambiguity. Krishna has made everything crystal clear. Krishna is saying that Krishna's instructions is very, very clear. He is saying, I am the ultimate goal for all of you. For all of you. I'll tell you a very nice story, okay, in this, in this relation. In two minutes quickly, I'll tell you a very nice story. So that in one, one point in time, there was this wealthy king. And this wealthy king had so many queens and he had Please be on mute. Who is it? Please be on mute. It disturbs a lot. Yeah. So this, this, so this, this king was having a good authority. So many queens, and you know, um, uh, but, uh, his kingdom was also very big, and all that. So once a sadhu came to his house and uh, to to his palace, and then he, you know, being a very pious king. He was a pious king. So he, he he welcomed the sadhu. He made him sit. He washed his legs. He sprinkled his water on his head. And he gave him a lot of donation and everything. And then sadhus are basically, why do the sadhu come? Sadhu don't want too much money and everything. Sadhu wants to give them gyan. Sadhu wants to give them knowledge. So, but this king was not at all interested in taking any knowledge. So the king thought, no, I'm happy. I have so many queens. I have a big kingdom. I have a good money in my treasury. I have many elephants, horses, this, that. So I don't need anything. I don't need any knowledge. I am there. I am there to respect you. 
and all that. So, but then uh, this uh, Sadhu felt a little bad that, you know, this king is a good king. He should have this knowledge. So the king said, so the Sadhu said, see, I have one request for you. If you fulfill that request, that will satisfy me. King immediately agreed. So the Sadhu said that, you know, you have to find one mudra in your, in your, uh, in your, uh, and you have to, you know, interact this mudra. Uh, every day he, he takes his sticks and goes around the city. Yeah, goes around the kingdom. And you pay him a good salary. So the king obeyed his order. He, he found a murkha. He gave him a salary. And this murkha every day, many years together, he was doing this. Once, once after many years, this king falls sick. And this king falls sick and sick. And then he is on a deathbed. When he is on his deathbed, everyone, all his relatives and his queen, the crying. And relatives are coming and meeting one by one, one by one. And this king is thinking, and everyone came and met me. And this is this murkha did not come. So then he calls for his murkha to come. Okay. So he tells this murkha, yeah, that, you know, see, I'm going to go now uh, to a very distant place. So now, you know, I wanted to meet you. So this murkha said, oh, you're going to a distant place. So I hope you're taking your queens, queens and everyone along. He said, no, no, I cannot. You are a fool. I cannot. No fool. I cannot take my queens and sons and no one. Everyone is going to be here. So he says, Achha. so then at least take, you know, horses and chariots and all that so that you will not get tired. He said, oh, fool, I am not going to get tired. I cannot take my horses and chariots and everything there. Oh, then you have to walk and at least take some treasury so that, you know, at least, you know, you will be able to, uh, you will have some money and then, you know, you will be uh, able to have, handle yourself so some food and everything. But, oh, I cannot take my money there. Are you, are you, you are such a big wolf. I cannot take anything. So the Murka said, Are you are not able to take your wives, you are not able to take your relatives, you are not able to take your money, you are not able to take your horses, neither chariots, nothing you are able to take. What is the use? So then he said, Oh, now enough of your talks. Okay, do one thing. You find a Mahamurka, yeah, Mahamurka. And then you, and uh, now I will tell you to retire. I will give you pension for your entire life. And now you find a Mahamurka and now give the stick to him. And tell him to go around the go around the kingdom. So then this uh, this this Murka says he takes the stick and he gives it his hands over to the king and he says, "You are the big Mahamurka. I give you the stick now. You go around." And this king becomes so angry. He says, "What are you doing? Are you are are you on your senses?" Then king says, "Then this Murka says, my dear king, you are the Mahamurka." Yeah, and the entire life you just spent, you know, expanding your kingdom and enjoying and all that. But never did you think that am I going to take this in my next life? Never did you think that. Yeah? So such so you are a big Mahamur. Yeah. So similarly, we all should know it, that we, we will have so many other duties to do. But this Krishna's instruction is crystal clear. Krishna is saying here that this human life you have got. You, I am the ultimate goal. That is what Krishna is saying. Any doubt on this? This has to go into your mind. Okay, this has to be very clear with you. Yeah, is this clear? Yeah, there is no doubt about this. Yeah, so Yadnya is an offering to Krishna. Yeah, yes. Now Krishna is talking with the demigod worship. Huh? Very important point. This also should be very clear with you. Yeah, this should be very what are demigods? Any 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 anyone has any confusion on who, who are demigods? Any confusion who are demigods? Demigods are Brahma, Shiva, Ganpati, Durga, Saraswati, yeah, the sun god. That is the god who worked under the guidance of Lord Krishna. Absolutely. But someone or they don't know who are demigods. They are specifically asked this question because we will we'll discuss everything about demigods, but they will not know only who demigods are. So then it is a waste of time. Yeah. So then, yeah. So these are the demigods. So Krishna is saying that uh, demigod worship is indirect worship to Krishna. So even if you are worshipping Brahma, even if you are worshipping Shiva, why is Krishna saying that? Any idea? He is saying that it is an indirect worship to, Shiva, uh, to Krishna. Any idea? Why is Krishna saying Mataji? Yes, Rita. Mataji, because he is only the creator. He is only the creator. Okay. Yes, Shuga Siddhi. Yes, wish a prayer to Lord Krishna. Okay, good. Yes, Shuga Siddhi. Mataji, because he has only created the demigods and he is only uh, like he is the father of them, whatever, whatever gift. Suppose it's my, uh, it's someone's birthday, it's my birthday, I receive a gift. 
but it is indirectly my father's also. Yeah, absolutely. Like very nice. A good example. Very nice, Shubhajri. Yes, Pallavi. Mataji, because they are agents of Krishna only, like um, in office, there are different employees. But if you go to one employee, he will go to boss only. Yeah, he's deriving his salary from the boss only. So, absolutely. Very nice. Yes, Yashmasin. You're doing such nice examples. So, the concepts are very clear. Yes, Yashmasin. Mataji, they are they are almost expansions of Lord Krishna, but they are not like lesser expansions of Lord Krishna. So when we devote our service to them, Krishna of some sometimes encourages us to do it, but it's still in indirect worship to him. Yeah. So just just one clarification which I want to give you is that all the demigods are Jiva Tattva. Okay. So like Radharani is an expansion. Um, the Shiva is also Shiva Tattva. So all the demigods are Jiva Tattva. Okay, so Jiva, they are like Jivas like us. But the most pure devotee gets the position of Brahma. So Brahma is a post. Okay, so Brahma is not, uh, you know, is like a... Uh, so, so it's like finance minister is a post and everyone will... Uh, they it, The post will get replaced with different persons. Similarly, Brahma is a post. Yeah, And it is like Jivas. They are like Jivas like us only. But they are the best devotees amongst all the Jivas. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yes. Yes. Anvita. Thank you, Mother. Anvita. It's because uh, everyone are um, just uh, all the demigods are just uh, like only the devotees of uh, Krishna, and uh, they are only uh, like uh, they give all like all their worship and everything they get our uh, worship from us. It's like we're giving worship to Krishna only. Absolutely. They are the worshippers of Krishna. Absolutely. Yes, I like to. Mataji, in a lecture, I have heard that Krishna is the expansion. Switch up to see you also. Aradhya, Arya. Yes, Vita. Actually, I am out of my hands. So, I have heard in a lecture that Krishna is the expansion of Radharani. Krishna is not expansion of Radharani. Radharani is expansion of Krishna. Original is Krishna only. <clears throat> Krishna expands. Radharani is an expansion of Krishna. So maybe you can hear that lecture again. Then the doubt will get cleared. Toda ulta ho gaya sunne mein. Garbad ho gaya. Don't worry. Okay? Yeah. Yes, Ali. <laughs> Yes, Mataji, the demigods also love Krishna and Krishna is in their heart and they love Krishna. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, Shubhashri. One more example. It is like, suppose there are two people who are doing the puppet show. The puppets are not real. Because uh, the person is uh, act, is is um because of his fingers or hands that is moving the puppet and that's why it is uh, acting like that. Yeah. The same. Absolutely. Yeah, but but yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So only one thing here, little correction is the puppets are not real. But demigods are real, but the demigods are puppets in the hands of Krishna. Absolutely. Very nice. Isla. Okay, so let's move ahead. So, okay, ultimate aim is Krishna. Okay, here we saw this heaven escape. Yeah, so here we, we saw this. I give rain. So, we should know this. Okay, who is the giver, giver of rain? Who is the center of rain? Who is the giver of light? Yeah, heat. Everything we should know. It's Krishna. So, it is not Sankara who is the giver of light and heat. It is Sankara. Uh, so, Krishna via Sangha. Okay, we should know this. It is Krishna via Indra. He gives rain. Okay, so the original provider is uh, Krishna himself. Like some, like someone just gave an example. I think Shubhashri gave an example. Like, I give a gift, but that gift is actually purchased with my father's money. So we should know who is the father. Ultimately, we should know that. Yeah. yeah okay, I'll skip this. I'll skip this. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is again very important. Huh? Results of worshipping demigods. Okay. Very, very important. This chart again should be, you know, engraved in your mind. Yeah. 
we perform puja or we perform different yajnas why so that we get prosperity in whatever we do look at this chart huh? we perform puja to go to swarga or this is not off this is or to get prosperity prosperity means success when we get pious credits yeah then what happens we, we, we are because we are performing this puja and yajna for the demigods we go to the demigods planets yeah and there we go to Swarga, we enjoy a lot of pleasures. And then after our, our pleasures are exhausted, when our money or when our pious credits get exhausted, yeah, then we come back to the earthly planet and we get stuck in the cycle of birth and death and the suffering. Okay. So this, this chart is very, very important. This Krishna is explaining in 9.20 and 9.21. Krishna does not promote demigod worship even if you are doing demigod worship we should know we should do it with full knowledge yeah? any doubts on this no doubts right okay that's we are coming close coming to close close, close to an end okay i am going to tell you a story and next 5 6 minutes will finish okay ananya chintaya toma meja napalu pasate tesham nitya vyukta nam yoga kshemam vahami so Krishna says, those who worship with me in devotion, do them and carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Yeah, the best example is always given, you know, Prabhupada gives and you know, always is given as the story of Arjuna Charya. Arjuna Charya was a very nice Brahman. He was studying Bhagavad Gita. He was teaching Bhagavad Gita. While he was te teaching Bhagavad Gita, he came across this verse 9.22. And, and Arjuna Charya was very poor Brahmana and he had nothing to eat. And many times he had to go to the uh, to beg arms. Sometimes used to get, sometimes used to not get, and then used to his kids used to go hungry to sleep. So then he thought that when Krishna is saying, you know, I personally come, I carry what they lack, and I preserve what they have. I bear the burden, yeah, vaham Matlab, I bear the burden of you know giving what they want, yeah. So he said, no, Krishna is Krishna. See, my kids are going hungry. And, and Krishna is not going to come personally. He might send some of his devotees or someone, he say. So he said that this line is a little incorrect. So he strikes out that line. When he strikes out that line, he, you know, he, he goes to, 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 uh, to, to, the, uh, to the houses to beg arms. His wife is at, at home. And when his wife is at home, two little boys come, one in white and one in black. They come and bring loads and loads of grains. And they place the grains in the house. They place the grain in the house and his wife, you know, is very happy. So she says, come sit, sit for something. She asks, who has sent this grain? She's saying, your husband has asked for this and we are just delivering it here. So she says, okay, please wait for some time. I'll make some sweet rice for you. No, 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 no. Your husband is a very cruel person. He will just, you know, he will just, uh, uh, he will just hit us. We don't want to stay here. And this boy starts running. When this boy starts running, he sees a mark on the black boy's back. He said, what happened to your back? You know, you have a, you really hurt yourself on the back. He said, this is your husband who has beta, uh, beaten us. We cannot, uh, he said, what? My husband is, is not that cruel. So your husband is very cruel. He has done this and this to work, run away. After some time, Arjuna Charya comes back home. And then he comes back home. He, uh, he, his wife tells him that what all has happened. These two little kids have come. And then, you know, Krishna in his heart revealed yeah, in Arjuna Charya's heart, that too, then he realized that Paramatma in his heart, you know, revealed that these two little boys were none other than Krishna and Balram. And that the strike which he was there on Krishna's back was that this, you know, the line that Yoga Kshemam Vaham Miham, he just striked off that line and that is what, you know, he was there on Krishna's back. So we should know that this Bhagavad Gita is Krishna himself. Yeah. And, and whatever Krishna is saying, Krishna is not a liar. Krishna is not a cheat. If he is saying something, he will stick to his words. And for his devotees, we saw, right, even in that Mahabharata war, wherein uh, Bhishma Dev, yeah, Bhishma Dev wanted Krishna to hold a weapon in his hand. He will, he will, he will, he will, he will say, okay, do help with my vows. For my devotees, I will do anything. Yeah, that is Krishna. Krishna will say, okay, I don't care about my reputation. If my devotee needs me, I will just run for them. Krishna saying, Yoga Kshema Bahamiyam, I will bear the burden of protecting my devotees. That is what Krishna is saying. I bear the burden. Yeah. You see, our Draupadi is calling Krishna. Immediately, Krishna came. Her five 
husbands could conquer the entire world, but they couldn't save his, his their wife. Krishna had to come and she called. Immediately Krishna came. You know, Prahlad Maharaj, Hiranyakashapu, Krishna came to save him. Sudama, yeah. So he's saying, those who, those who are always thinking of me and worshipping me, I carry the burden. He's saying, it is my headache. It is not your headache. It is not my devotee's headache. It is my problem to get that, get that thing solved for my devotees, yeah. So Krishna protects. Yeah, I'm not going to cover this story. You all know, this is Govardhan Leela. Krishna how protected him over the Nita. And this story of Brigari. Yeah, Brigari was a hunter. And then eventually Nagarmuni met him and Nagarmuni said, just give, give this up and make a nice kutir and stay in that kutir with your wife. Brigari said, how will I stay? Who, who will feed me? Nagarmuni said, don't worry. You will have adequate food. And when, you know, just have a night hermitage, have a tulsi plant outside and just chant the name of Krishna. You will get adequate food. After some time, you know, for a few days when everyone realized that there, there, there is some say staying there, villagers after villagers started bringing so many food, so much food for this, for these, these two that, you know, they were, it was like more than sufficient for them. So Krishna says, I take care of their maintenance. Don't worry. Yeah. He says, I will personally take care. That is what he's saying. So we should not doubt. Yeah. And then further in 9.23, he said, demigod, worship, so, so he's saying, Satatam Kirtu Yantumam, understand, I am the goal, I am the one who is the provider. Demigod, worship you are doing, but you are doing it, oh, Vidhi Purvakam, in a wrong way you are doing, yeah. You see this person, his person is, what this person should do, this person should water the roots of the tree, but this person is watering the leaves. So this is, oh, Vidhi is doing it in the wrong way, yeah. So here yes, we are saying that you, for you to supply the food to the to all your hands, legs, and everything, you have to you have to supply food to your stomach. But if you don't do that, you are doing it in the wrong way. Yes, if you worship the gods, you are doing it in the wrong way. So Krishna says, yes. uh, why does why does Krishna say those who are dim, those who are devotees of worship? Okay. Achha, tiga, this, this we discussed, right? Okay. People worship them in gods, but they do it in the wrong way. Anyone wants to answer this question quickly? We are almost done. Why does Krishna say that you are doing it in the wrong way? Mataji? Yes, Arya Shrivastha. Good to see you. Arya. Aditya, Aditya. Good to see you. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Mataji, the answer. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the people in, in this world uh, usually worship the demigods which, are, which give us the temporary powers of the, and the blessings. Yeah. And, and they get their power from Lord Sri Krishna. And they yeah. and the people does not worship Krishna. Yeah. Very nice. They give the they, demigods only give temporary benefits. Yeah. So very good you got, got this point. Like somebody yesterday even explained that demigods are like shopkeepers. I don't remember who said that. They are like shopkeepers. They are, they are not worried about your your uh, well well being and all, but Krishna is our father. I think Pallavi only said this. Someone said this. I don't remember. So you should you should know this, yeah. But they are doing it in the wrong way, yeah. And and then they are saying ignorance is not an excuse, yeah. So uh, Krishna in nine point twenty four says that I am. He is saying, oh, Krishna is saying, I am not saying anything. He is saying I am the only enjoyer and the master of the sacrifices. Therefore, those who do not recognize my true nature will fall down and he's saying if you do not know this ignorance is not an excuse you do not know this is not my problem i have given you bhagavad gita please study bhagavad gita if you're starting worshiping demigods you will fall down yeah that is what he's saying yeah all the vedic literatures are meant to satisfy krishna yeah less intelligent person do not know this they worship demigods and they fall into the material existence. Yeah, why? Because demigod will give you temporary benefit. You will get attached to the temporary benefit and you will get attached only to this material world and you will just get stuck here. You will not get a chance to go back home, back to Godhead. Very important point. Any questions on demigods? Yes, yes, we'll see. I see your hand raised. Madhaji, I'm not asking a question like you asked the question before, so I'm telling the answer of that. You want to answer that? We love to hear. 
Mataji, we are instead of praying to the master, we are praying to the servitors of the master. Like yeah. the demigods are the servants of the Krishna, but we are praying to the servants instead of Lord Krishna. Absolutely, absolutely. So, like for example, we are uh, we are uh, uh, you know treating MP like a prime minister. MP cannot be treated like a prime minister, right? So same way, absolutely, yes. very nice. Yes, uh, Bhavini, you had raised your hand, and I caught you. Are you there? Okay, yes, Subhash, do you want to say something? One second, I'll come to you. Yeah, then this is again very important. This is very important shloka. I just will spend two minutes on this, but please bear with me. It says, Yanti Deva, Brita Deva, Titra Niyanti, Tritravataha, Bhuta Niyanti, Bhuteja, Yanti, Mat, Yajino, Pimam. Very important shloka. What is Krishna saying here? Yeah, I'm explaining here. He says, Those who worship demigods, will go to the planets of demigods. Listen very carefully. Very important point. Yeah, We worship sun god. We worship uh, uh, Indra. We worship um, uh, Durga Devi. We worship uh, whatever, Ganpati. Then we will go to the planet of demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will go to the planet of ghosts. Very important point. Those who worship ancestors will go to Pitraloka. Okay? But those who worship me will come, will live with me. Is this very clear to all of you? Show me thumbs up. Yes, mother. Show me thumbs up. Blood will show me thumbs up. Good, very nice. Show me thumbs up. Everyone should show me thumbs up. Good. So this point has to be very clear to all of us. Yeah. So demigod worship is like watering the flowers, fruits of the tree. But Krishna worship is watering the roots of the tree. Yeah. So with this, we finish the first 25 shlokas of from chapter 9. Next session, we will finish the balanced shlokas of chapter 9. And next year's session. Because I didn't want to rush about this. You know, I wanted this to be very clear. See, so this is the transcendental knowledge. This is when Krishna is explaining his position. Krishna is explaining the position of the demigods. Krishna is explaining creation. Yeah, Krishna is explaining who will understand this. Why this is treated as secret. All these things Krishna is explaining here. So this is very, very important for all of us to know. Okay? So we will end our session here. If you have any questions, I will have happy.